Dude, so how was Austin? It was nice. Texas is, uh, it, it was not what I expected for Texas, actually. I was expecting like cowboys. A bunch of hippies running around smoking weed. Hey, everybody, it's The Flow Show. I'm your boy, Chicago Sean, joined as always by Steve Straza, our director of research. What's up, Straza? Not much. How's it going over there? Oh, you know, just came off a nice long weekend, little family time up in the mountains. How about you? Yeah, it's lovely. I love Fourth of July, so that was fun. And uh, now we got some action coming coming back on a Tuesday with a short week, and uh, markets are moving again. <laughs> we got some action. So for those who haven't seen the Flow Show before, this is the uh, a show where we talk about unusual options activity, or at least we we talk about what we're seeing in the unusual options activity and see if that can direct us into uh, into a, a, an interesting trade. Um, and we don't plan what we're gonna say ahead of time. Straza likes to spring this on me. We're improvising here, it's all good. So you guys can kind of see how we go through our process of, of crafting options trades. So with that little uh, intro, Straza, this week's Follow the Flow Report, what, uh, anything stand out this week? We had a nice mix um, this week. I would say there's a good amount of cyclical stocks here. so. A lot of materials names, um, you know, silver miners, the iShares ETF, SLV, Cleveland Cliffs, Freeport, McMoran. So there's a nice mix of those in there. But then there's also a lot of, um, there's also the Explorers and Producers ETF, XOP, some bullish flow. There's also a lot of growth stocks, like these, you know, these long duration ARCI stocks, um, Pinterest, Nikola, Lucid. Oh, those are both EV makers, right? Yep. Oh, both bullish flow in the EV makers, Nikola and Lucid, bearish flow in Ford. Bearish trade? Well, yeah, perhaps. Um, okay, so the, the follow the flow report you got right now, Look, it looks like at first glance as I look at it, it looks like we see a lot more activity on the call side than on the put side. Am I, am I reading that right? It's always the case. Um, having four, you know, bearish uh, stocks in here or, you know, bearish items in here is actually more than we've seen lately. Right. 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 So where do you think, uh, where do you think some of this call activity is aggressive versus call activity to the, you know, a little bit wishy-washy, if that makes sense. Well, it's interesting, right? Cause even, you know, I talk about how there's a fair amount of arc stocks in here. Okta's another one, Pindodo. I don't know if Twitter technically is or not, but you know, social media fits that mold. Um, then there's bearish flow in ARC itself. That is very interesting. Maybe a little little hedge going on, little, uh, you know, uh, sell the index, buy the components kind of situation. Yeah, I mean, interestingly enough, I was looking at a lot of these names. Um, I like Pindodo. Here's the chart. Uh, we put a trade on this yesterday. Uh, we put the trade out there, but we're only buying on strength, so haven't entered it yet. We'll be buying... Um, on a breakout, you know, this little coil, both like it says 70 here. It's really about like 68, um, but it looks pretty good. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, this falls into that Chinese internet group, right? And we've been talking about a lot internally. So you, I know you know, but these stocks bottomed in March. So the rest of the market, you know, has been falling all throughout Q2, selling off aggressively, most areas. And these Chinese internet stocks carving out nice bases. I think this is a pretty nice vehicle. What do you see in there? Yeah, so uh, how did you pronounce that, Pindodo? Listen, I have no idea if that's how you I say it. I mean, I don't know either. I'm just, I'm asking. I thought it was Pinduoduo, yeah. Duo, but I'm just being literal with the spelling. I don't yeah. know. Phonetically, sure. I think we could go with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong. I just, you know. Anyway, um, so looking at your chart, the chart that you've got there, I mean, I love the chart setup. I love that breakout in relative strength. Yeah. Um, if you flip over to my chart here, um, when you look at the, uh, the implied volatility on the lower pane, we are well off the highs of the implied volatility that we saw in March, Yeah. but we're still, you know, that's still high. If, if you, you know, if you look widen the lens out to earlier, you know, this time last year, we were much lower. So, um, it, I would be hard pressed to be a buyer of calls if I wanted to express a bullish bet here. Uh, probably the play I would look at would be some kind of uh, call spread, uh, maybe a bull call spread. Let's keep it as simple as possible. 
Um, so let's open up the chain here real quick. I, I'm pretty sure we've got very liquid options here. Uh, yes, we do. Um, how did I know that so quickly? A little shorthand? Pretty often, if you see that the uh, stock has weekly options, that's a safe bet that that's got a very robust options market. That's why they offer the weeklies to give options traders more choices because <laughs> there's a lot of volume there. Um, this is actually one of the larger stocks like in the Chinese internet ETF. It's one of the bigger names out there. That, uh, that would make sense. So uh, if I were to look at an options trader, I'd probably go into October options at the earliest that's a little bit more than three months expiration right now we don't have a september contract so october is where i would look uh let me bring that chart back up here so 70 you know we probably want to break but buy that breakout above 70. Yeah. i see on your chart you got a measured move up at 105. Mm -hmm. we probably don't need to go that far for an options trade to have a good options trade but let's just check something out here if i uh, did like a if i bought a 70 call uh, and then so I mean, there's a nice premium there at the 90 strike. We can get, uh, you know, we could sell it for four bucks. If I crafted this as a 90, let me, uh, there we go. Uh, we, we'd be paying about $5 and 33 cents or say five thirty-five for that spread. I like that, right? It's the most that spread could be worth is 20. So back of the envelope math it's not quite not quite a four to one you know reward to risk profile on a uh on a, on a bull call spread like that oops let me um we drop the little analyze tab so you guys can see what that looks like uh so if we were to put the trade similar to this on this is what the pnl graph would look like uh the break even would be right around 70, I'll call 75 and a quarter. So if, if, right. uh, if at expiration in October, PDD was anywhere above 75 and a quarter, this trade would be profitable. Um, I like selling, I mean, yeah, I mean a 70, 90 bull call spread for five, five thirty five seems like a good, a good trade. I mean, I like that we got uh, $4 of premium uh, to sell in those October options at, at 90 right there. Now, if we bought on strength, say two points higher, would you still be able to get in? Um, I I mean, you'll, you'll pay more than what it's offered right now at 535, but I don't think you'd pay a whole lot more for waiting because, uh, because we have until October. I right. think, uh, you know, if, if the move happened within the next day or two, maybe we'd pay 550. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think it'd be that much. Uh, higher, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I like the spread only because of the implied volatility being so high. Uh, also, yes, there's relative strength that's been coming in here, and yes, it, it's put in a pretty nice bottom down here. Uh, but because this thing has come from much higher prices, right? It traded uh, in close, you know, around 200 at one point. There will be times on this rise where we're going to run into some overhead supply. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Totally. Um, but uh, I guess that's just the reason why I, I wouldn't be wildly bullish here just by calls for all of these reasons. I, I think a bull call spread makes a little bit more sense. Um, for those who are into that sort of thing, maybe you could sell a naked put here. Um, I wouldn't be comfortable selling a naked put, Straza. I don't like selling naked puts in anything in China. The word China and naked puts sounds like bad news to me. <laughs> and from a technical standpoint, too, I, you want to be patient and let it resolve higher first, then put this kind of trade on. You know, we're in an environment where we want these stocks to all prove themselves to us. And while these are definitely, this is an area of relative strength right now. I mean, if you zoom out on this chart, it's been going down for a long time, right? This is. The, the very early stages of a reversal. These bases can take time. You could very well see like, you know, on the chart here, I could have drawn this like a little head and shouldery type thing. Maybe it takes a little longer for a right shoulder to form. Maybe a month or two from now before we actually get a base breakout. Uh, but we'll see. They do look good. Hey, I'm interested. What's the implied vol look like for K-Web these days? K-Web, let's pull it up. It's kind of looks a lot like the the PDD, uh, similar thing, right? We had a big spike in March when everything was selling off in China, and then it's it's off significantly from those highs, but still relatively high, you know, 
if 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 you if you ignore the price action from uh, from basically from March first until now, uh, then we're at the top of the range that we had been in the pr- previous nine months. So, uh, and and nearly identical situation as Pin Duo Duo. If I said that right, Pin Duo Duo. We'll find out how to say this uh, name, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. But that's it. I mean, there's not a lot of opportunities out here this weekend. While I was going through the list, um, looking for something to write about in the post, I almost did a. I call it like a no name post. I'm gonna say there's there's nothing on this list um, because that's how bad setups are these days. I mean, this is the best. This is the best we have to choose from uh, in many regards. Man, there used to be a, a great bar in Buffalo when I was in college called No Names. Just <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. You just told me, you just put me in the Wayback Machine right there. Thank you for that. Uh, all right. So, uh, Pin Duo Duo is the trade that uh, from the follow the flow list uh, seems to uh, have the most to offer here because uh, we do like the chart set up. It, it does have the potential for a run. And look, even if we got into this trade and we did buy a 70, 90 call spread and the stock did in fact move to that measured move of 105, it absolutely could run into some upper resistance there, which is what I was worried about. But hey, if that's where it runs into resistance, Straza, our, our, uh, our, pre- our spread is gonna make money. It's gonna work out. So, totally. you know, we're good. <laughs> So I like, I like this setup. Uh, we don't need a big move. We don't need it to go back to all time highs to make to make money. Uh, we're just kind upside. Of, what's that? Fifty percent upside there. Yeah, make, I mean, money, money. I like it. All right, Straza. Well, that's how we make lemons out of lemonade. When you got high vol and you're bullish, uh, we, we use a spread. We use that out of the money premium to uh, to improve our odds of success by lowering the cost of participation. We've got defined risk. So, hey, this is a China name, right? Yeah. A headline out of China can spook people, and this stock could get cut in half overnight. We've seen it before; it'll happen again. But with our defined risk spread, at least we could size the trade in such a way that if we were to lose 100% of our capital on that trade, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, be manageable. We, we, we know what that loss is up front. So that puts us in a position of strength. Straza, great job. Great job. Thanks. Uh, great to reconnect with you after the long weekend. I hope uh, you have a great trading week and um, I might see you tomorrow for the options trade of the week. See you then. 